Good morning, boys and girls. You are in session three. And so if you, hadn't, if you don't have your books, you can go ahead and grab your books in case you need to take notes. It's going to take a few minutes. So in session three, we were talking about Eros love. And so that is the sexual passionate love. And so with with that being said, that's where you get the awkward stares or some of you are not wanting to make eye contact with other people in the room. It's going to be okay. So, so when we talk about sexual passionate love, Sometimes it gets conflicted a little bit. So the, conf the part that gets confusing or gets a little off kilter is the fact that in our culture, um, in the Bible, we would refer to it as lust, where basically uh, somebody's looking at somebody and Jesus refers to it uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. And he's talking about the fact that adultery is actually where you're looking at somebody and you're thinking pretty much what you want to do with them in a not appropriate way. Uh, and that leads to the fact that where we sinned and he's talking about it. you've already done it in your heart because you've already done it in your mind and the thing is is what i wanted to do was actually backtrack a little bit to what to actually where we actually should be when it comes to that type of love and that passion and what where that comes from without getting into a whole lot of detail in it to throw you you know i don't want to throw you guys off but so here's what happens is so if you go back all the way to the garden of eden adam and eve were in perfect union with god and so in that perfect union they're in the garden, Adam and Eve are hanging out together, and you have God that's there, and they're in there, and they have this relationship that's there in, in the garden. Adam and Eve sin, they get moved out from there. And what ends up taking place after that is really interesting, because God is dwelling and speaks with, is with them. And then the other places where God is dwelling, when you look in the Old Testament, is going to be the tabernacle with the Israelites, and as they're moving to different places, and then... As we, they have the temple where they do worship later on when you're talking about Solomon and David. And then from that point forward, that leads to when Jesus is born. And we talk about we're in the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Gospels. And then so from that point on, Jesus is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit until he dies. And then three days later resurrects. And then in Acts, the Holy Spirit dwells, start, begins to dwell within us. So our main passage that we're going to get into and that I'm going to uh, kind of discuss is actually talking about the fact that the dwelling place within us for that for that love and experiencing God's love actually comes from, or excuse me, is actually talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It's talking about the body of Christ and it says, it says Do you not know and understand? It says, You, the church, are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells permanently in in you collectively and individually it says if anyone destroys the temple of god corrupting it with false doctrine uh god will destroy the destroyer for the temple of god is holy sacred and that is what you are so when he's referring to uh, to that as the body of christ in that that piece is we're all supposed to be unified together and if we're of one understanding and we have of one accord then when things in culture and society are telling us, oh, this is the way that we're supposed to do things, and we look at it and examine it in Scripture, then us as the collective body of Christ can be able to say, oh, no, that's not actually how we're supposed to live. And that's the part that's, that's a little bit different, is in our culture and our world today, people live however they want. And that's fine because the laws and regulations in this country give them the freedom and ability to do, to do that to a certain extent. But for us, we're called to a little bit of a different standard. And so in 1 Corinthians... Uh, chapter 6 uh, as we delve into that but in Corinth in their culture it was kind of the same thing where it just had different stuff that they were going on they had different beliefs and a bunch of blending and different things and then people were uh, basically using sex in, in ways that wasn't supposed to be in, that wasn't intended or mentioned or the way that God intended it to happen and so what ends up taking place is that that people within the church are now living living that way and living those types of living stuff out that way. And so what, what Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, he says, Everything is permissible to me, but not everything is beneficial. He says, Everything is permissible to me. He says, But I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and stomach is for food, but God will, will destroy them both. He says, The body is not meant for sexual morality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
It says, By his power, God raised, raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Verse 15. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ in himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. It says, Do you not know that, that he who unites himself with a prostitute is, is one with her body? For it is said that the two will become one flesh. It says, But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And so the reason why is because actually in that culture, they actually had temple prostitutes where somebody would go, Hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to go worship the Lord and interact thinking that they were doing it for a religious purpose or whatever confusing thing that was in there. We're not going to get into all those details today. But the thing was, the thing is, is that what did he go back to? Paul went to the to the fact that the two will become one flesh. God created marriage for man and a woman in order to so the two will become one flesh and be united and have that union with God. So then you go back tabernacle, temple, Jesus coming back, Holy Spirit comes upon us, and then the fact that there's something else that happens in verse 18. It says, flee from sexual morality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. It says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you and who have received from God? It says, you are not your own. It says, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And then soon after that, he gets into talking about marriage. Now, the cool part about it is, is that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but the perfect union that God has created has been when man and woman marry and join together and have being filled with the Holy Spirit, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, and being in union together and having perfect union with God. And that's the cool part about that love that's there because it's a totally different type of love than it's like, ooh, look at her or look at him or whatever. Look at his muscles or look at her or whatever. And it's a completely different deal. So as you guys are going to head into just digging deeper and going into your books, just take a moment and just kind of think about it. Is the way that you view sex relationships or even this passionate type of love, the ones that you hear in the songs, the ones that sometimes the girls are picking the fact that they would want to hear this certain song or or as they're in a dating relationship, uh, people have certain expectations or thoughts of how this should go. And I think sometimes it gets distorted because really we're created to be in perfect union with God and then through marriage to be in perfect union, to be one flesh and then have a relationship with Christ. So you guys have a great day. Have a great week, rest of your weekend, and we will see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.